Um, I'm giving a short presentation on another building block for paranoid data center identity access management. And basically, this, this is not really rocket science. Uh, it's about using OpenSSH user certificates, but short term certificates, as kind of a lock in tickets. So, why to do that? Um, who of you is using SSH with authorized keys? And who of you generated a new key within the last six months? Well, at least four people, you know, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, usually you're doing it only very rarely. And that's bad. That's bad for several reasons because you're storing long-term keys on disk. And uh, depending on your own discipline, the security of those private keys are, can vary a lot. You know? so <clears throat> and uh, if something goes wrong, revocation of such a long-term key does not really work in practice. Um, there's a solution for that called hardware tokens. You can use FIDE tokens or YubiKeys to store key, key material on there and it does not leave the, leave the, uh, the hardware. The, the, the issue with that is th these hardware tokens are really slow. And uh, in this customer project, people are, for example, doing SSH scans over 2,000 machines or something. So if you have an additional penalty of 800 milliseconds per, s per connection, um, they will call me crazy. Yeah? So, <clears throat> um, and the security requirement, the actual security requirement was to add multi-factor authentication to the game. So, so the security department said, okay, at least do multi-factor authentication once a day for accessing, for accessing the production environment. <clears throat> So the customer came to me and, and hi actually hired me, me for cabos. Um, but then I convinced him that shared secrets um, are less secure than asymmetric uh, cryptography. And therefore, we ended up in, uh, with temporary open SSH user certificates, which are not X509 certificates, because the open SSH developer really hate X509. So. <coughs> Okay, basically, uh, this idea is not new. I, I'm not the first one to come up with it. Uh, actually, Facebook, Uber, Netflix are doing this for managing their infrastructures. And uh, there, are, there are also various other implementations for such an SSH CA. You can, you can search on GitHub. There are various flavors um, doing that. <coughs> um, but I wanted to be able to really adapt it to the customer's infrastructure, so I decided to implement it uh, on my own as a, in Python 3. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was allowed to publish it under Apache License 2. And um, mainly it consists of a very simple command line client and, uh, and a very simple web service. <coughs> um, Actually, we are using hardware security modules with, uh, within the SSH CA over the SSH uh, key agent. Uh, with this command line option, you can, you can you actually use a PKCS 11 module uh, to, to access the keys, or to use the keys in a an, in an hardware security module. Uh, the whole thing is stateless, so um, they have pairs of um, of such CAs uh, uh, spread across their data centers. <clears throat> and you can read options you can put into um, the OpenSSH user certificates. Uh, it can read them from the user's LDAP entry. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to adapt that a little bit, uh, the password checking and the OTP <coughs> checking uh, can, are implemented actually by Python namespace packages as plugins. <clears throat> okay, that's how the stuff looks like. 
This is the admin workstation, the usual SSH uh, uh, agent used by the SSH client um, to authenticate with an authorized key here. You know. <coughs> but before of that, he calls this SSH init script, very simple command line tool. Uh, this SSH init script asks for username, password, OTP, sends a web request. Finally, the web request got signed here. This is the CA component. Uh, the signature is done within the hardware security module and uh, the, the result is returned to the SSH init script which loads private key and uh, the temporary private key and the open SSH user certificate into the SSH agent and it can be uh, used as usual. Okay, demo time. Oh, two minute tabs. Okay. So, okay, you see here, uh, this is a local demo instance of the, of the CA service and I've loaded a CA key into the SSA agent. You see here it's, it's a test CA uh, key and uh, that's, a, um, that's a simple web service based on Flask, on the Python Flask package. <coughs> and so I can simply run it here with Flask uh, run command. So on the client side, okay, I have a separate key agent here, you know, so I remove all those identities so I cannot, I cannot uh, log in there. But I can obtain a certificate. I have to push the OTP button. So and now it returns me a certificate and for example, you can also see there's an extension. Oh, let me do this a little bit bigger. So uh, there are also extensions, for example. This key can be used to get a pseudo TTY. <coughs> and for example, this is an option read from the LDAP server. So and uh, now I can log into this machine. And what's happening there is Ah, changing window size, sorry for that. So, uh, what basically happened there was the certificate is validated against a public key installed as a trust center, the, the, the CA's public key. So, and here you have the usual login message, and it also says that's the key ID of the OpenSSH user certificate, and this is the serial number encoded therein. And that's it. And all you have to do is yeah. All you have to do is to add this trusted user CA keys uh, directive to the SSHD uh, config, and um, and then you don't need to distribute authorized key files or something like this. So. And the nice thing is um, you don't have any, from this target system, you don't have any connection, not necessarily a connection to your backend. To your, to, to your back so um, so, so um, I mean, in this case, it's directly integrated with the LDAP server, but it doesn't have to be. You know? So you, you just you're just validating uh, the certificate signature and that's it. You know? so, you, so you can have some scenarios where you have, for example, you're doing remote administration at your customer site and you're logging in with, with user certificates um, which you locally issue, but the, but, the, but the system does not have to have a connection to your own identity and access management. So that's nice. Okay, any questions? Do we have time for questions? I was fast. Great. <laughs> hmm? It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you uh, look into uh, Ashikov Bolt, this SSH engine? 
Yeah. Which is basically okay. exactly. Yeah. The, the question was, uh, did I examine HashiCorp what? Um, yes, I know they have also have a SSHDA subcomponent um, doing exactly this, but uh, then you have to set up HashiCorp Vault with all the with all the stuff, and um, this was considered too much work at that at this customer side. You know, this is really that simple. I mean, it does not even have a it does not even have a database backend besides the normal LDAP server and the normal OTP stuff. So, so because they're not using, let me put it like this, if you're already using HashiCorp Vault, it's a good idea to, to use that, you know, so, so you probably don't want to build something else. Uh, d depending on whether you can integrate HashiCorp Vault with your OTP solution or something, you know. Uh, but um, but if, you, if you're not using it yet, so it might make more sense to have something smaller. Because I, I really love small solutions uh, because you can, uh, the security reviews are much easier. Yeah. And this has been pen tested also. Yeah. Okay, any more question? One more. Mm, it's that simple. Okay, next one.